Hello everybody. Roll to win here and I get asked a lot about landing zones and I ask myself about landing zones too quite a bit and so when I start missing and I have been missing my landing zone a little bit here lately here's an easy prop that I do I've got my ruler here and we'll go straight down this don't pass bar which is about where I want my dice to land <clears throat> I'm gonna put a six I'm just using some sidewalk chalk just to give me something to visualize So I'm marking it off six inches to ten inches. So I've got a four inch depth, and that would be about a three inch wide box. I'll just take a little piece of wood square it off so that I can look at it down there. The theory is if you can consistently use the same grip, use the same toss, and hit the landing zone consistently, you're going to get more consistent results. So I'm going to go down to stick left one. I want to make a few practice tosses into that. I'm also going to try to keep track of uh, what my hits are. See if I'm getting some consistent results in this. Otherwise we're just practicing tossing if we're not getting consistent results or finding the problem to the consistency. So we're working on hand-eye coordination I guess and I want to just be setting the same die set every time it's not really anything special. It's something I used way back in the summer quite a bit and haven't haven't tossed it a lot since early. So I was a little bit over. I got an eight. It's just a little bit long. And that's my tendency. I, I tend to want to crash the wall a little bit. In my mind, you need that Ken Venturi drop shot. And that's not really what you want. There we go. Got a nine. Yeah, I'm sorry, a ten. Couldn't see. Again, I may even try to sneak a slow motion of the dice landing down in there. You'll be amazed. Perfect. Five. You'd be amazed at the violence that the dice go through, even on a pretty nice little easy toss. Oh, that was way off and that was a total release problem 
I could feel it soon as I got my hand up with the dice leaving. I knew I had a release problem. <coughs> This is a pretty good little tip. It doesn't hurt your uh, layout at all if you use chalk. A little short. Those dice are crossed in the air, so a little bit of grip issue with that five. Pieces. So get it in your head that you got one type of release problem and you create another release problem. <clears throat> A little lack of concentration as well. bit left again. Four. Those didn't even make the wall. It's really important, really important to get consistent in all aspects of this situation. A little short, but not bad. Hard eight. I do want them to die pretty darn close to that wall. far. Good little toss. There's another eight. Let's see. We've tossed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tosses. We'll do a few more and then I'm going to take the camera. Uh, I'm going to pause it for a moment. I'm going to bring it back here to show you another handy trick. Nice. Look how nice that, that those dice hit right here, stopped right at the wall. Big ugly seven. But that's our first seven. I'll throw the dice out for that chip out so we know what what we've thrown. We'll do just a few more. six. That's the first six we've tossed. I'm not going to bore you with watching a rectangle with dice light landing around it much longer. and aces. Okay, so <clears throat> I know I had a couple and short, and I think I got aces on both of those. But we've had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tosses. We had 1, 7 after about 10 or so tosses. 3, 8, 
pretty much scattered across the box numbers, but the dice look real good down there. Now I'm going to pause the video for just a moment. All I did was adjust the camera down here. Now I'm tossing right now. I'm setting my dice on the cut edge right about in here. So if we take and measure, I've got a 12 foot table inside wall to inside the wall basically. I'll go all the way down to the center of that square all the way against the wall. So I'm shooting, and this is my practice area, just over nine feet. On a 12 foot table, stick left one's right in here. On a, on a 14 foot table, stick left one's right in here. That's why I choose to practice between the nine and the 10 foot mark. I know on my layout, if I shoot right in here, or practice right in here, I'm at nine and a half feet. When I'm practicing from the hook, I will go all the way to back here and set my dice at 11 feet, six inches, right there where my thumb is. So distance, control, your grip, your release, in your landing zone. <clears throat> are all very, very important. And you have to practice. We, we tend to want to get out here and just and practice in our numbers or see if we can hit hard ways or practice some exotic system and we don't deliver the dice down the table with any consistency. So right in here, with that nine and a half foot mark area, take the dice, my dice, I put the, the uh, edge of the dice right down on the table and I try to I line them up on a line, I pick them up, and I set them on a line, keep them square. Nice. Had a yo. So now we're at an 11. Do a couple more. And then I'll see if I can splice in maybe a slow mo for the dice down there at the landing in that box that I drew. Just so you can see what the violence of it all looks like. That one was a little long. Got an ace deuce. Ace deuce out of it. Don't mess around. I've already hit the, the small. I'm gonna mess around and hit the all tall small practicing the landing zone. Nice. There's another yo. I think that may have been it right there. I think we, did I hit? I think I hit a yellow a minute ago and didn't mark it. I think we've, I think we've goofed around almost, except well, well, there's a seven in the middle of it. We'll say we've goofed around and basically hit all the numbers. There's a hard eight. We had an hard eight, hard eight earlier. There's four eights. not always going to be the same number you're probably going to have once you get your mechanics down to where you're consistently doing the same thing landing in the same spot there's nothing magic about that spot down there that spot will move further from the wall it can move closer to the wall depending upon 
how you toss it and also on how bouncy the table is. The more bouncy the table is, the lower you're going to want to keep the dice and you're going to want to kind of hit it up there where I was hitting in, in front earlier of that box. Something like that would be my first uh, first thought. One more time. Just to the left of the box. And that was a seven. So you see just a little bit a little bit off to make a difference in your results. So I was a little bit off. I may have had a little bit of a twist on my hand or moved my elbow over. The other thing that's important, and I know you probably can't see it, but I'm going to back out here a little bit further. <coughs> If you're down here next to the rail, a lot of times you'll have a tendency to make an arc and that'll, so I catch, when I catch myself missing, particularly to the inside, I get out here and I lean over, make sure I'm leaning over the table correctly so that I'm a little bit straighter down this arm. I'm not even going to tell you how ugly that one was. Alright, so what if you're shooting from the hook and you're aiming for that target? Same, similar thing. Not a lot of changes to make. I prop my arm up here. I take this arm, I stretch it out, and I kind of lock myself in. Stabilize. Same grip. Trying to split on me there. Same grip. Same toss. Got a five. One dice is a little short. Anyway, that's enough on you've got the idea on how to practice, how to set up some props. Um there is one other prop that's really, really cool to do. Uh, you can take that 25 or 30 foot ruler and you can run it from down there and down to here over the, over the rail. Give yourself a visual line of the top of the rail. Try to keep your dice close to that height at their peak. That's a good tool to help you visualize as you toss. We may do that on another video just to make sure you've got that concept. But all these are just little tools that will help you to establish the mechanics that you can continuously replicate. And when you start falling off in practice, do what I did. Draw another square down there. Am I hitting the landing zone? Am I hitting where I want? Are my dice landing on the edge? Are they landing on the points? Or if you hear that loud crack, they're landing, which is what I want. I want them to land on the flat. Take one hop and die. You can, you can hear it when they when they land perfectly like that. It's a it's a louder thud. It doesn't have the crack or the uh, when I get too much thumb pressure though my dice last thing I want to hear is those dice touching each other in the air. And sometimes they do that. But hope you enjoyed this. I hope this will help you with your practice and if you have any other hints, ideas, share them with us. We'll be glad to put them on if we if we can. And hit that subscribe button. 
practice like you play because you're going to play like you practice and that's to help you roll to win.